Hi, this is Matthew Robert Payne. This is the parable of the servant's duty. I'm the author of 57 um, books published on Amazon under the name Matthew Robert Payne. Um, I'm the author, author of 850 articles on eZine articles, E-Z-I-N-E articles.com. And I'm the author of uh, two and a half thousand videos here on YouTube. Uh, this parable will be one of 54 parables recorded on one of the YouTube playlists of mine that you can look up and also will be published in a book um, uh, forthcoming in the next two or three months uh, when I get all the parables done and edited and uh, ready for a book and publication. That book will be 99 cents uh, in the future. So we're just going to go to the text and we're going to read it and then I'm going to bring forth the parable. And which of you having a servant plowing or tending sheep will say to him when he has come in from the field, come at once and sit down to eat? But will he not rather say to him, prepare something for my supper and gird yourself and serve me till I've eaten and drunk? and afterward you will eat and drink. Does he thank the servant because he did the things that were commanded of him? I think not, so likewise you, when you've done all these things that you are commanded, say we are unprofitable servants, we've done what was our duty to do. Um, originally, uh, six, uh, nine years ago, uh, when I first uh, was doing the 54 parables of Jesus. Uh, this is just a bit of testimony. This is one parable I really had uh, issue with. Uh, I've, uh, for the last 20 years, I've been a very obedient uh, follower of Jesus and someone who understood and uh, did my best to practice the 50 commands of Jesus and uh, lived a really obedient lifestyle. And because of my obedience in, in my own self-righteousness, I thought I was uh, the bee's knees. I thought I was pretty special and, uh, and a cut above most Christians. And you may even, uh, as you read these parables, as you listen to these parables, you may even see uh, or feel a little bit of that pride coming through that I think I'm pretty good. And uh, if you do, I apologise to that. And uh, I'm humble enough to say that I've still got uh, self-righteousness in me. Um, but I, I couldn't do this parable. When I came across this parable, I couldn't say of myself that I'm an unprofitable servant. And uh, so I had a real issue. Um, and if you go to the book, you'll, you'll see that I had a bit of a struggle with it. I think I even mentioned that I was going to have a struggle doing that. I think it's important to say we've done all these things which you commanded us. Uh, we're unprofitable servants. And... I think uh, it's strange because most Christians haven't done everything Jesus commanded. Uh, most Christians uh, have no idea that Jesus had 50 commands. And uh, you hear that time and time and time and time and time again in my teaching that uh, Jesus said five times in John 14 and John 15. He said, if you love me, obey my commands. If you love me, obey my commands. If you love me, obey my commands. He just went on and on. I think um, the Apostle uh, John said it four, four, not four more times in his letters. I think it was said nine times in, in the writings of John and once by Matthew uh, in the Great Commission, Jesus said, teaching them everything I commanded you. Um, so an essential part of, of the gospel of Jesus Christ is obeying what he taught. And uh, here we see Jesus saying, that even when you did what you were commanded, uh, you're to uh, just consider yourself unworthy and an unprofitable servant. And uh, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that most Christians think that they're unprofitable servants. I, I don't think um, very many Christians have the humility to say, "But for the grace of God, go I." Um, it's it's okay. You, you know, people. Uh, can use the word humility, but uh, very few people are really humble. And uh, 
that uh, can be exemplified by the fact that I had a problem preaching this parable. That, uh, but uh, when I consider um, 39 years of sleeping with prostitutes and uh, 39 years of, of uh, or 36 years of sleeping with prostitutes and 39 years of a pornography addiction, I can see that Jesus just uh, and the Father just forgave me thousands of times and tens of thousands of times with porn. And, um, and, and who am I to think I'm something great? And, uh, you know, if Jesus hadn't died on the cross and paid the blood sacrifice for the remission of sins, um, I'd be guilty as hell. And uh, I am guilty as hell. And it's only through his blood sacrifice and um, the forgiveness of Jesus Christ and his grace that I'm still standing, that... Um, it's a miracle that I, I haven't died uh, from a venereal disease or something. Um, we, we, we need to understand that the proper Christian life is one of servanthood. Um, we, we need to understand that the way to become great in the kingdom is to be a servant to all mankind. And, uh, uh, it's said in the in, in the Gospels. Uh, it's it's said in the Bible that he that wants to become great must become the servant of all. And uh, the I, I've met uh, I've met two apostles um, in my life uh, in the flesh, and they 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 were just like older fathers to me. They just they just loved to me. They could see my potential. They were just beautiful to me. Most. Uh, Christian leadership reject me and don't want to know me and aren't kind to me. And these men just loved me and answered all my questions. And I had hundreds of questions and they just loved on me. Um, but they were a servant of everyone. They, they asked questions and listened to people and they just loved people so completely. And I can imagine what it would have been like being ministered to by the apostle Paul that he too uh, would have been a servant to men. And uh, he, he served so well that he even had a full-time job to earn an income and he didn't place a burden on the church to be paid. Um, and uh, I think it's lost in, in the modern gospel. Uh, I think we, we, we all think that uh, we, we've, we've, we're important. I think the... The, the modern Christian thinks that there's someone great and someone important and they're deserving, uh, they're deserving of blessings and grace and great wealth. And I think that the modern gospel has lost this um, understanding of, of, of being a servant and loving your fellow man. I, I think they pay lip service to love, but when it comes to expressing love in practical ways, uh, people fall really, uh, really uh, short. So this person in the parable uh, did like uh, from sun up to sun down worth of work, 12 hours worth of work in the field, either ploughing, uh, ploughing on a farm or tending sheep. And then they come in and uh, have to cook dinner for their boss and serve their boss uh, a couple of plates full of food and serve their boss wine and when when the boss is uh, eaten he's filled and and uh, the servant has taken the plates and the drink uh, the cups away uh, and washed up then the servant can sit down with the meal he cooked and have a meal himself and um, how many christians are like that 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 their whole life is based on serving all day in the heat of the day like doing their proper christian service and then ministering to jesus at night time and uh, and how many christians actually think they're unworthy servants and um, just fortunate to be even, even know our master and uh, so i i hope uh, that this uh, parable um convicts you uh, it's a very convicting parable just like uh reading 1 corinthians 13 the love chapter by paul uh, I can't read that without being convicted. It just 
like looking in a mirror and seeing uh, your face uh, full of dirt. You, you want to uh, apply some water to your face and look in the mirror until the dirt is gone. I think uh, reading a parable like this and understanding a parable like this is uh, like seeing a dirty face and uh, we've got to clean up our act and we've got to um, make a change of heart. And uh, if you need to repent and totally have a change of heart, you might need to do that because uh, Jesus loves us and he desires us and the best, the best form of living, the best way that uh, you can live on this earth is to know the will of God and be doing that with your life. Uh, the best uh, way to uh, live in this world is to die to self, to, like a seed, die and be planted in the ground and re-sprout and regrow and, 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 and do the service and do the things of the Lord with our life. Uh, the best way of living life is... Uh, uh, crucifying your flesh and dying daily and being led by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit each day. Um, so that's the best way of living, but um, very few people have got an understanding that they're unprofitable servants, that, that uh, even though they may be saving millions of people, even though they, they may have a multinational ministry, even though they, they may be doing 300 meetings a year around the world. Uh, the best they are is an unprofitable servant. And uh, it's a message that we've got to understand and we, we've got to know. And um, it's hopefully a message that you've listened to today or read in a book today and, uh, and uh, made a decision to seek the Lord and uh, pray uh, for him to give you the grace to turn around. If uh, you enjoyed this message, uh, press thumbs up. Uh, if you didn't enjoy it, press thumbs down. Uh, if you want to encourage me, uh, please write a comment. Uh, if uh, you're new to this channel, please uh, press uh, a uh, subscribe and press the bell and press the word all. Um, if you want to share this with your friends, share it. Just remember, this is one of 54 parables on my playlist. I, I welcome you to uh, go and check them out. May the love and grace of Christ uh, transform you into someone new. God bless.